Hi guys, I'm back again today with another video and today we're checking out why the Dutch wait less at traffic lights. So before we do start, don't forget to subscribe, click the bell button and let's get it. I was laughing because sometimes the traffic lights here, it's a funny situation. Funny. Let's see. When I'm traveling somewhere, I hate traffic lights, and I go out of my way to find routes that avoid them. But for some reason, I still find them interesting. I even own a real traffic light at home. When studying engineering in Canada, I had an exam question to design a state machine for a traffic light controller. It had to go green, then yellow, then red, and then repeat in the other direction. Easy enough. I would not want to take that exam question in the Netherlands because traffic lights are way more complicated here. There are several times where I've sat around watching traffic lights in the Netherlands with absolute fascination. Does anyone else do that or is it just us engineers? Just you Traffic probably. lights in the Netherlands have so many interesting engineers. combinations and they change depending on what traffic is detected and from where. Most cities in the world have detection circuits at low traffic intersections to detect if there's a stopped car at a red light. But traffic-dependent detectors, which detect approaching traffic and change the signals based on real-time traffic levels, are used at the majority of intersections in Amsterdam. And these kind of signals are much more common in the Netherlands in general than in other countries. The North American traffic engineering profession was created to manage cars, and it shows. The movement of cars is the absolute highest priority over everything else. In the Netherlands, there are two priorities at traffic lights. First is to minimize conflict, to reduce the number of times any road user will cross the path of any other, for safety. The second is to optimize the movement of as many people as possible, not just as many cars as possible. And that makes the road function much more efficiently. Here's an example from a new intersection I cross every day. As you can see, there's a countdown timer for the bicycle light, which is nice. But there are loops in the ground to detect bicycles not just at the light, but also several meters before the light, and the same oh. is done for car traffic. If the controller detects that a cyclist is approaching and the intersection could be clear, then it will make the light red for cars and speed up the countdown timer to let cyclists get through without stopping. Oh. It's always so satisfying to watch the timer count down in only a few seconds, just because it detected my bike. Oh, wow. In North America, when it's green, it's green for everyone in that direction. But yeah, in the Netherlands, exactly. many signals work independently. So when there's a chance for one direction it's to here, go it's the same here, of another, course. then they're given that opportunity. In this example, the bicycle light is green in both directions, here and here, because there are no cars detected going straight through, allowing this girl on the bike to turn left without stopping. Yet this time, the far signal is not green, so these cyclists need to stop to allow these cars to go through. On larger intersections, pedestrians may be given a green light to cross partway instead of having to wait until the whole intersection is clear to start walking. If a tram arrives, it will be given priority, and that's right, isn't it so much better than uh, like you waiting there forever? And let's say there's no cars, right? There's no cars, but you're just waiting there forever because it's freaking red. And then uh, when there are cars or when there's a car, then it will turn green and then you have to walk. Now the car has to stop. So it's like efficiency of time. Um, it would be better if it's like detected. If it's a smart stoplight, it will be so much better, right? Than us just standing there looking at nothingness. In North <laughs> and America, we don't even have those pressy all things. Almost crossings are single phase which prevents the intersection from responding to real-time traffic levels. That simplicity is not only inefficient, but if you're walking or cycling, it can also be really scary because you have a long distance to travel and cars can cross your path in multiple places. It's for this reason that Dutch traffic signals can let pedestrians and cyclists have their own signal while cars are given a red light. Notice here that cyclists are given a green light to make a left turn while all car traffic is stopped making this an extremely safe crossing. Pedestrians are also allowed to cross here, in the bottom left, because they do not cross paths with those left-turning cyclists. This is an interesting circumstance where cyclists are given a green in two directions at once. This results in the cyclists on the left needing to wait briefly here, but it allows the cyclists to get through in one light cycle. 
I didn't see this happen in any other light cycle, so the system must have detected a buildup of cyclists and optimized for it. I also really appreciate that there are no right turns on a red light for cars here, which is good because this is a ridiculously pedestrian unfriendly rule. A US study found that allowing cars to turn right on red resulted in a 69% increase in crashes with pedestrians and cyclists. The Netherlands tightly controls when right turns can be made, which not only significantly increases the safety of people outside of cars, but also ensures that the path is clear for right turning cars. It allows more advanced light combinations as well. Watch how this tram turns left while these cars in the foreground can turn right, while no pedestrians or cyclists are allowed to cross in their way. With no right turn on red, pedestrians can be given a head start. Notice how these people are halfway through the intersection before the bicycles and cars are allowed to go. These leading pedestrian signals are still quite rare in North America, but they significantly increase pedestrian safety from right turning cars. One Chicago study found a 13% decrease in collisions with people walking when leading pedestrian signals were used. I find that intersections here are very pedestrian friendly in general. Watch these people cross. They come up to the crossing, press the beg button, and the light changes immediately for them. The way most traffic lights are programmed in North America, that will almost never happen. In car-centric cities, you have a very narrow window of time to push that button, or you'll be waiting a whole light cycle to try again. Watch what happens when this man presses the beg button. The light was red, but the pedestrian signal doesn't come on, because it was pressed too late. The light turns green for cars, of course, but there's no walk signal, so these people are technically crossing illegally. It's completely ridiculous, but North American traffic engineers go out of their way to avoid slowing down drivers by having those pesky pedestrians in the way. Pedestrians and cyclists are seen as a nuisance that get in the way of drivers, rather than people who are also trying to get somewhere. What's worse is that buses and streetcars are almost always stuck in traffic because traffic engineers and politicians don't want to take away any space from cars to make a dedicated transit lane, even though it would ultimately speed up car traffic. Thankfully, in the Netherlands, public transportation has the highest priority and almost always gets a green light. It doesn't matter what else is happening at this intersection, this tram is going through right now. Often, the only time a tram will be at a red light is when it's ahead of schedule, or when another transit vehicle is crossing first. This is the obvious and sane thing to do, because a bus or tram will usually have dozens of people on it who should clearly have priority. It's not that cities in the US and Canada don't have sophisticated traffic light control systems, they do. This document describes a system used in Toronto. They even have the capability for transit signal priority. It's just that these systems are almost exclusively used to keep car traffic flowing and are rarely used to prioritize any other modes of travel or to ensure the safety of other road users. For example, even in this fully separated and dedicated streetcar lane in Toronto, the streetcar gets stuck at this red light but they won't install transit signal priority here because it would, and I quote, fatally disrupt operations on intersecting streets. That's engineer speak for, screw the people on that streetcar, there are drivers who have important places to go. What do you want us to do, Here's like fly across Toronto the road? <laughs> At, At least light, put a some bridge so we can cross if you don't want to prioritize Of course, being Canada, it's not a priority signal, but that's not the most infuriating part. That's a good thing about when the turning left, they don't like want pedestrians, pedestrian. to cross the street I mean, in front of the street car, over so they block the walk signal walk here. Bridge or whatever you call it. But because these traffic lights are stupid, it also blocks the walk signal here, where there aren't even any tracks, because the two pedestrian signals are linked. They do, of course, give drivers a green light here, because drivers. That's are something super... I'm not. I'm noticing in all the most of the videos, like Toronto or like Canada and even Europe, you guys don't have the pedestrian. I mean, like the walk bridges a lot, uh, which of course it might be due to engineering, architecture, whatever the reason is. But that's something that I like living here because I hate like crossing, even if there's a pedestrian crossing, I don't like taking them because i don't trust drivers and i don't trust our traffic lights because yeah i just don't trust them so i would rather walk up the bridge yes it's it you have to walk the stairs and then go down the stairs it's too much work but it's for me i look at it as a workout anyways so yeah i, I that's the one thing that i like over here is those above 
like bridges or whatever. Important people who have super important places to go, but pedestrians are left literally standing in the cold, waiting for no good reason. With the independent signals in the Netherlands, this should never happen here. There are so many other interesting traffic light combinations in the Netherlands, such as intersections where cyclists get a green signal in all directions, or even traffic signals that prioritize bicycles when it's raining. But I think I'll save those topics for the next time I visit Groningen. I don't know of any intersections in the Netherlands that use a pedestrian scramble like you'll see in cities like London, but I have a feeling that when pedestrian volumes become that high in Dutch cities, the whole area will become pedestrianized instead, which is better for people walking anyway. Of course, alternative to traffic lights, such as roundabouts, are sometimes used, but that's a topic for another day. And there are even some intersections in Amsterdam where traffic lights have been removed completely. This is possible if car traffic is reduced enough in speed and frequency, and this will definitely be a topic for a future video. So I may hate traffic lights. Yeah, oh, no, no, intrigued no, no, about no, that. Not you, not you, no, it's okay. It's okay. Is this guy okay? But the Netherlands proves that it's possible to design more efficient traffic lights that move as many people as possible, not just as many cars as possible, and they can also significantly reduce points of conflict, making the roads safer for everyone. The technology is there, but the smartest cities are the ones that actually use it. Well, maybe just I'd like to, to take install this them to thank my supporters on Patreon expensive? who pay me to stand around at traffic lights for an know. uncomfortably long period of time. If you'd Good like for to support you. the channel, visit patreon.com slash not just bikes. I also it's, want to it's thank better Matt. to get paid to start around traffic lights than to not get paid, right? So anyways, this has been a very interesting topic because I don't sit there and wonder, hmm. One annoying thing that I hate here is, yeah, sometimes the traffic lights don't work. So they have to get the traffic enforcers to come and do their thing, to come and do that, their thing. But they're like the worst. Like, oh my gosh, they are so worse but sometimes the traffic lights will be working and they're still there i don't know why maybe it's their practice like they told them hey this is your internship this is your practice so you go disrupt the traffic flow uh because that's what they do they disrupt the flow of the traffic they make you worse like if there's a traffic light right without the traffic enforcers the the traffic is like it's flowing it flows but the moment that it gets busy, I always notice this. The moment that it gets busy at this area, I'm like, oh, there's an enforcer. And when we pass at the traffic light, I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. there's a uh, traffic enforcer. They actually cause more traffic. I don't know why. I don't know why. But anyways, uh, yeah, that's it for me. Let me know. If you like this video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.